Guys, uh, a couple of weeks ago, Debbie and I were, uh, we got a movie that is called Sabina. The subtitle is Tortured for Christ the Nazi Years. And, you know, we were in the movie business. We get a lot of movies. We see a lot of movies. And quite honestly, when we see movies that have a sort of a conservative spin or a Christian message, we sometimes don't have the highest expectations of those movies because we think, man, this is going to be kind of well-meaning and coming from the right place. But technically, cinematically, it's not going to be all that good. Uh, and normally, we're proven right. Uh, and we have all kinds of critiques after the movie. We sit around. We go, they should have done this. They should have done that. Now, this movie, Sabina, is a, an exception to that rule. And I, I'll be honest with you, Debbie and I watched this movie. And honey, just pop in for a second, because yeah, yeah. I, I got to say, I was yeah. completely taken by the movie from the beginning. It is beautifully shot. It is an enthralling story. And the climax of this movie is just overwhelming. I mean, you and I... I mean, we I don't cried. even, Both we literally us. just broke down <laughs> well, and it's because we have never seen the Christian message delivered in yeah. such a convincing and mm. emotionally powerful way. Yeah, you agree? Amazing. I, I thought it was, you know, if, if you bring somebody to watch this movie with you that may not know the walk with Christ, I tell you what, at the end of this movie, they will be so overwhelmed with emotion and, and hopefully they will want to seek him because I cannot imagine anybody walking out of the movie theater and not have that feeling. Yeah, it's so, it's an incredible movie. By the way, it's going to be in theaters November 8th through the 10th. Uh, but I'm assuming it's going to be today. Oh, that's right. Okay, so today through Wednesday. And I'm thrilled that we have the director of the movie, John Gruders, here. Um, John, uh, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for joining me. And my gosh, I don't, congratulations doesn't even say it enough. This is an incredible film. I really wish people go to the theater. I'm sure it's going to be available in other formats later, but it's, it's in theaters now um, and people should go see it. Let me start by just asking you, you know, um, this movie is in fact based upon a true story. Tell us a little bit about the story and the process of taking the story and bringing it to the big screen. Man, I'd be delighted to, and it's such an honor to, to be on your show this morning. I just, uh, I just want to say on the top of the story that uh, I, I admire what you do and your writings and your films, so I'm, I'm really tickled to get a chance to talk to you today. And this, this, this material this, that we have with Sabina and Richard Wormbrand, as a filmmaker, it's such a fantastic testimony it would be almost hard to mess it up, you know. It's, it's just their story was so legitimate and they suffered so greatly. So the story began three years ago. In 1967, Richard Wormbrand wrote a little book called Tortured for Christ. It was maybe the first book written by a survivor of communist prisons. And he was tortured every day for 14 years and, and just held strong to the Lord and, and wrote this book, Tortured for Christ. It became a bestseller. He was asked to testify before a U.S. Uh, subcommittee in Washington. They didn't believe him. He took a shirt off and he showed him 18 puncture wounds in his body and then they believed him. And uh, so we actually made this movie, Tortured for Christ, four years ago and released that one worldwide. And it was a great uh, entree for me into their work, into their story, into their land. I hadn't been in Romania before, but in the producing that movie, we worked in the actual prisons and the actual places where many of it happened. And so that movie came out. The movie was a very powerful film. It just it left me with one big question, which was how did these people become these amazing saints? Were they born of virgins is really what I kept saying, because I wasn't. <laughs> so we got a chance along with the Voice of the Martyrs, and I wrote another screenplay and sent it to them, and they let us uh, green light the project, which is really the backstory. So this this Sabina film, which opens today in 850 theaters, is the backstory to to the the movie Tortured for Christ. And by by doing that, we realized, boy, they weren't born of virgins. They were just like the rest of us, you know. And and their arc was really really large. So I kind of saw these as bookend pieces. We we did them out of order. We didn't know there would be a second one. But um, that was the story for how we, we got the chance to tell this movie, uh, Sabina, the Nazi years. You know, John, we have a, um, a, a clip from the trailer. I want people to get a feel for the movie. So if you'll just hang with me for a second, we're going to play about a minute of the trailer. But I think it gives uh, you a sense of the beautiful texture and the uh, emotional range of this film. So take a peek. Listen. SS came looking for you today. 
I'm not hiding. And you should. Uh, since he's been a bomb band? We can get you to the border if we leave now. You know this is ridiculous. I'm collecting all the verses in the Bible that tell us not to be afraid. I think I might need to lean on all of them. If we stay, I'll follow the others into prison. It will be the end of our life together. Whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. We believe this or we don't. I think we have to stay. We have a job to do. I mean, John, I'm, I'm actually getting a little chill just watching the trailer because it's evoking for me. I mean, it's the same emotions I feel when I watch movies like Beckett or A Man for All Seasons, Braveheart. I mean, that sense of the soaring of the soul. And let's talk just about the opening scene of the movie. I mean, it's just incredible. You've got these hardened Nazis and they're running away from the communists. The Russians are now moving in uh, to Romania. They're taking over the Nazi territories. And these Nazis find in this woman who is of Jewish background, although a convert to Christianity, someone who's actually willing to help them. So you start, you have this sort of preposterous thesis that opens the film. Why would somebody who is not just a Christian, but a Christian of Jewish descent, want to help Nazis get away from the Russians? And you're like absorbed from the first moment. So it's a brilliant uh, opening of the film. And it, I, I'll have to say it just gets better from there. <laughs> well, as a writer, you know, we've been taught to, to make sure that your movies have a central question that you, that you need to answer. Uh, and, and, and really, I just put it straight out there. I mean, there's no beating around the bush. She really says directly to her, why would a woman help a Nazi soldier? You know it's a death sentence. I would never do for you, you know, what you're doing for me. And when the Third Reich recaptures Bucharest, don't expect to turn around here. And the movie answers that question. Why would a woman risk her life and help her mortal enemy. And I love the word you use, it's preposterous. And so is the gospel. And, and, and it, it strikes her as preposterous when she first is encountering the idea that the, the Bible says, you know, if your enemy's hungry, give him something to eat. And if your enemy's thirsty, give him water. She says, this is ridiculous. And, uh, and yet she ends up living out that same sense of ridiculous conviction and, and how the, the equations of God in so many ways are opposite the, the equations of the world. And so that is the question, and, and it's an interesting time in history. You know, Romania, this little country the size of Colorado, it just, it just takes a left hook from the Nazis, and then it switches allegiances halfway through World War II, and it joins the Allies, which you'd think would offer a little bit of respite for them, and then instead they get the Stalinist communists, and then, then the right hook comes. And so the, the, the really the country of Romania just suffered under both of those horrid repressive regimes, the Holocaust was massive in Romania, second only to Germany in terms of people killed. But in, if you can even imagine, it's, you could argue that the communist era was even worse and lasted until fairly recently. I mean, I was around in 1989. I remember when Ceausescu was finally overthrown. So um, the time in history where, where Richard and Sabina were placed is such an interesting time. And uh, it's in that crucible of high tension and high drama that when people like them uh, came to Christ, they didn't kind of come halfway. Halfway wasn't an option. Uh, and it isn't an option today if you're in so many places where the persecution is, is, is relevant. And, and that's why it's such a powerful story is, yes, it's historic, but I think we all are smelling the salts of our modern world going, this, this feels imminent for so many of us. And maybe we could have the kind of fortitude and conviction to, to make it to the end the way, the way these two did. Absolutely. They're very inspiring. John, when we come back, I want to delve into all this deeper. I want people to sort of meet through our conversation. Sabina Wormbrand, who's the central figure of this film. We'll be right back. 